thank you, Michael, for taking time on this fine morning to have a few words with us. And um, let me ask you a few questions. Uh, first is, what is your area of expertise? And what is that you do? So my, my background, I have a doctor from the Harvard Business School, and I've been in the alternative uh, investment industry for now almost 40 years mm -hmm. with a particular focus on futures traders, commodities, CTAs, um, both as a fund of funds uh, manager and, a, and, and an advisor to uh, high net worth individuals. So I've, I've had my own fund of funds and headed up uh, alternatives for a major wealth management firm and inside a major hedge fund for a while as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So um, there is a growing interest in the Chinese commodity markets. And uh, how would you compare those to global markets? So the interesting thing about the Chinese markets is that there are almost 25 different commodities that are traded in those markets. Many of them are, are, are not traded in the global markets. Mm -hmm. um, would you name a few? So you have uh, rubber, which is uh, not so actively traded elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You have uh, silicon, mm -hmm. uh, various uh, uh, chemicals. Um, iron ore is a very big uh, contract in China and not very well traded out outside of China. So uh, what, what's it also very interesting about Chinese markets, it's much like the, what people call the Wild West of, uh, of, of commodity trading in the 60s and the 70s, dominated by retail investors. Would you comment the Wild West when you say Wild West? What, what do you really mean? Is <laughs> well, it like people still shooting? Yeah. <laughs> well, a little bit wild and crazy, lots of inefficiencies, uh, oh. very active movement. And uh, when you get retail participation, they tend to, there's a lot of behavioral finance, they, they tend to follow each other, and that extends trends in both directions, up and down. And uh, that makes uh, the Chinese markets uh, very interesting to uh, systematic approaches. And of course, this conference is focused on big data and you know uh, artificial yeah. intelligence. So people who are using those kinds of systematic approaches are quite interested in the Chinese markets. And maybe then, since we are comparing to the global markets, could you point out some major uh, major differences? What we see, or well. In, in, in the global markets these days, they're dominated more by institutional investors. So mm -hmm. they don't tend to be quite as uh, trendy, uh, mm -hmm. and there's more rapid reversals. So uh, the, 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 that's the, the reason there's significant interest in global commodity trading advisors to trade China is because they're very amenable to systematic approaches. Um, just. But the, the difficulty is that uh, you can't easily access those markets. I see. So we're in the detail on the global, global CTAS trade in the Chinese markets. Right. Yes. So the only way to trade in the Chinese markets is to raise money in China. The, the Chinese government has restricted uh, access to those markets, except for four, which include uh, steel, mm -hmm. uh, energy, uh, rubber, and uh, one more. So. What, what uh, CTAs are trying to do is either establish themselves in China as a commodity trading mm -hmm. advisor mm -hmm. and get registered, or go in to China through a fund of funds, which is actually an area that, that we have expertise in. But uh, if some, you have to raise the money in China to trade mm -hmm. those markets. Mm -hmm. So that's what's <coughs> quite unique about it. So is this it's, the way they protect their <coughs> local... Yeah, they, they don't want money sloshing in and out. They're trying okay. to control that. Um, but the, they, the government doesn't interfere with the commodity market. Well, I mean, they, <laughs> they do in, in, by, by uh, subsidizing certain production of, mm -hmm. let's say, iron ore. But uh, in the stock market, when the stock market is going down in China, they put on severe restrictions on shorting. And in fact, uh, one, one of the uh, best-known traders that made a lot of money shorting the... Uh, Chinese stock market uh, ended up in jail. Wow. <laughs> so, so, no shorting they, there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they put restrictions on those markets, but the commodity markets are, are, are free. And, and when you think of a Chinese investor, what are they, they going to invest in? They have real estate, stocks, and they're, they, they do like to, um, uh, they're, they're, they're sort of inveterate traders and gamblers. 
the commodity markets are, are, are very attractive to. So that makes those markets quite interesting. Very yeah. interesting. And then uh, one of the last questions. Yeah. Are the investors looking more at the uh, more closely at the commodities as the asset class nowadays? You know, the investors tend to look at commodities when commodities are going up. So when the oil price is going up, they think that's the time to invest in commodities. Um, and, and most people start with a passive index. Um, the trouble is, in the long run, while commodities are not correlated with stocks, in certain periods they can be. So uh, more and more people are, are looking at investing in commodities in, with other alternative ways of, of approaching them, like investing with, with uh, traders that are not just long, but long and short. So uh, more absolute return in the commodity sector is, 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 is of growing interest. But it, it's, it's, a, it's an, an asset class that adds to diversification with, with uh, good returns over the long run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, in the uh, absolute conclusion of our short uh, Express interview, uh, would you uh, tell us, are you enjoying our conference? Are you enjoying yourself here? How do you find it? I, it it's, a, it's a unique setting. It's, I understand it's short, uh, yeah. too, too soon to speak, but it's No, early, no, it's, so. a, it's such a unique setting, and, and uh, uh, VDAC has uh, organized uh, such a wide range of different uh, topics, and the, the whole area of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Big data is is growing interest for all investors, right. so I, I, I th it's extremely well attended and uh, just very interesting. But he's so unique in in, in organizing the um, the music and and other aspects surrounding the conference. I think it's uh, definitely uh, <laughs> right. not to be missed. Not to be missed. Yeah, it helps each other. Thank you so much, Michael, okay. for sharing your expertise right. and nice. knowledge. Thank you.